It's just a matter of being prolific in volume, in style, in media, in subject matter. You know what I'm saying? My history from the painting of billboards and all that kind of stuff. It's just, I just don't know too many people that have been through what I've gone through. And that in itself just creates this type of unicorn, right? Artist Village as we know it started out in this little room as my art studio and that was in ooh, 2000 let's just say for the sake of my old man it's 2000 <laughs> uh, but basically there was nothing here it was an old abandoned warehouse and um, they wanted us to paint some artwork on the outside to make it look like somebody was here because people kept breaking in because the owner was only here on a couple weekends out of the month he used it as a storage space. He was an electrician. So um, that's basically how it started. But it started in this little room as just uh, uh, my art studio. I've been creating these types of spaces ever since I was a young man in my mother's basement. I started putting artwork on the walls, and it was just my own little sacred space. I mean, all these children do it. But I was fortunate enough to have, we had a really cool basement, and uh, I had a lot of space. So. Um, just carrying that tradition on for years, I've always had, I mean, I've been an artist, you know, you gotta have a studio. And when you got a studio, people wanna hang out at the studio. So with me, it was always, you can hang out, but I want people to be productive. So you're not just hanging out, you know, so. Um, but then the Artist vi Village, over the years, after, you know, I've done this in Ohio, I've done this in California, I've done this um, downtown Detroit. When I first came, we had a place called the Johansson Charles Gallery that was like a multifunctional artist space before anybody was even talking about that kind of thing. And we used to do poetry and uh, low rider bike shows and all kind of stuff. But uh, once we activated this space, um, there was a liquor store, and in the morning I would see kids going by and they got Cheetos and those little fake juice drinks in the morning, and they weren't, I just could tell they weren't eating right. So anyway, I'd cook breakfast and get bring the kids in, but that was always my mission to teach kids art, because I didn't have anybody to mentor me when I was coming up, and I always felt like if I had somebody to mentor me and gave me that head start, I would have been so much farther ahead, because fortunately I um, got a senior year of high school, I got into Crockett Vocation. They had just opened their vocational schools in Detroit, and I got commercial art, and that's when I realized I could have a career in art. And so at that point, I've always wanted to let young people know that you can have a career in art. And, you know, we've been brainwashed, oh, starving artists, starving artists. But that's bullshit, because everything in our world had to be designed by artists. Everything. So when I started really putting that in perspective, um, I really started using that as an emphasis of my teaching. And, you know, really, once you even help young people understand that, it's like, wow, come to think about it, you're right, Mr. Miller. I was like, yeah, somebody had to design the couch. So, and so not only that, within that, Somebody has to market it, package it, put it on the shelf and sell it. So all of that has different forms of art involved. So with that in mind, I just always went on this quest to try to teach young people. And so that's what I did. So this was, has been like evolved into an incubator, workshop, uh, cultivation space for talents. One day I'm out on the corner cleaning with volunteers and I realized that shit, that I was in the same neighborhood I got carjacked in making a difference changing lives but the art was the major catalyst that changed the game and um, I mean and you can look at stories all across the world especially in like favelas in uh, Rio de Janeiro the very poor favelas they've taken and brought graffiti art murals in whole poor neighborhoods and now it's all this tourism and all kind of stuff so yeah and that was my, my statement that art has a way of civilizing us and you know, and that's when it used to say music calms the savage beast, so it's the same thing. Continue um, to evolve and level up using the energy of the next generations and like really taking it to a higher level of professionalism and academia where, you know, ultimately we can provide scholarships and we can provide some serious uh, training and we got all the equipment. One of the ways I look at this place, it was like the field of dreams. And, you know, again, when I was first in here, the floor was covered with oil, there were rats. And you really have to really 
follow your dreams, but activate them. And activate them by first documenting, writing it down. Because once you start writing things down, they become closer to reality. And then so on and so forth. But just understand that thoughts are things. So you are what you think about. And so that's just what I would like to leave with people. You know, think positive thoughts because thoughts are things. Everything around us started with a thought and here it is. And here we are. And there you go.